Hi guys, welcome. Today we'll build our own text editor in Flutter and Python. Flutter is based on Flutter for Python and gives the opportunity to build such a beautiful app. We will use a snack bar, other dialog, shortcut keys and much more in this app. Let's get started. Let's first install Flutter via pip. Import Flutter as ft and create main function. We pass page to the function which is a type of ft.page. Page is our root window. Now you can change the height and width of the window and call page.update to apply the changes. Finally, we call ft.app outside of the function and pass main function to its target attribute run the app. I run the app with flat instead of python in terminal so you can use hot reload feature flat. So when we make a change in our app, it automatically gets applied in the real time and we don't need to close and run the app again. These are the basics. If you're not familiar with flat, you can first watch the flat introduction video. Let's create a class named text editor which derives from ft.user control and we need to return a control or widget in its build method like a text control. Now you can create an instance of text editor class and add it to the page. When we use add method, we don't need to call update, as add method does it for us. As you see, the text is added to the top of the page. When we want to create a custom control or widget, we create a class that derives from user control and return the widget in the build method. All the widgets or controls are made this way. We can nest functions in main function, but I like to keep the code clean, so we do most of the things in text editor class. Let's pass the page to its constructor so we can manipulate the page directly in the text editor class. Whenever you call the constructor of a class that derives from user control, you must call the superclass constructor too. self.page equals page. So now we can manipulate our root window using self.page. If you're not comfortable with classes and object-oriented programming, I strongly recommend watching the classes and OOP video before this one. Now we need to pass page to the instance that we created so it won't break. Now that everything is set up, let's build our text editor. In the build method, we create a text field and store it in self.main.tf. We want our text field to be multi-lined to have as many lines as we want. Auto-focused, so when the application is run, we can start typing right away. Its border is equal to ft.inputborder.none, so we don't have a border around the text field. Let's return self.main.tf. As you see, we can type right away, have as many lines as we want, and we have no border around it. But the problem is, when we reach the end of the window, it doesn't get scrolled. To fix that, we will set page.scroll to ft.scrollmode.always, so when we reach the end of the page, it gets scrolled. We can have different scroll modes, but this one is the best for a text editor. Next, let's append the container to the overlay of the page. The container has the padding of 5 to have some distances from the edges, expanded so it occupies all the available space, and background color is amber 200. You can change the color to whatever you want. FT Colors has tons of different colors with different tones available. The number after the name is for the tone of the color. Finally, the content of the container is a row. As you see, an amber line is added to the top of the page. That's our overlay that no matter what is at the top of our page, even if you scroll the page. Let's now create a pop-up menu button and store it in self.more menu. Its content is an icon which we pass ft.icons.morevert. You can access tons of icons via ft.icons class. Items is a list of pop-up menu items which are different options of our menu. First item we pass self.newclick to its unclick attribute. We will create the method later. Its content is a row which first has a text widget that says new. Then a vertical divider and finally another text widget that shows the shortcut key for the command to the user. The vertical divider puts in space between two text widgets to be more organized. Note that all the content of the row are in a list. Let's add our more menu to the overlay. It's working fine, but as you see the text goes under the overlay. Let's quickly return a column which has first a divider, then the self.main.tf text field. Opacity of the divider is zero, so it's invisible. Because of the divider, we now have a space between the text field and the overlay. Now let's add three more items to the more menu. First one was new, which gives us a new text field to type. Next open, which is for opening a text file. Next one is save as, to save the file on your hard disk. And finally, save to save the file whenever we change it. The unclick attribute is commented out so the app doesn't return an error as we haven't created them yet. Let's test it. We need to change the alignment so they'll look better. We need to give the name of the list which is controls and set the alignment to ft.mainaxisalignment that's space between. That looks great. Let's do the same for other items. Nice. Now we can create the methods and give functionality to the items of the menu. These methods should have an event holder, which I name it E. Later I show its use case. For now, let it be there.
Let's uncomment the unclick attribute and test them. They are linked properly. Now let's link shortcut keys to the methods. To do that, we create unkeyboard method, which its E is a type of ft.keyboard event. So this event holder lets us know what keys are pressed. If control and n are pressed, then call no clicked method, and we need to pass E to the method. If control and O are pressed, we call open clicked. If control and shift and S are pressed, we call save as. Finally, if control and S but not shift are pressed, we call save clicked method. E.Control and E.Shift are booleans and E.Key is a string so we know exactly what buttons are pressed on the keyboard. Finally, we should set self.page.onkeyboard event, which is a flat function to return pressed keys to self.onkeyboard that we created. Self.page.onkeyboard event automatically returns the key through the E variable that we specified for the onkeyboard method. That's why we need a variable for all state manager methods that we create. They are all there to receive some data that possibly can be used like this case of shortcut keys. When I press Ctrl plus N, new click is printed. Other shortcuts work as well. Great. Now we can write the functionality of the items. When new is pressed, I want to give the user a fresh text field to type on. So we empty the value of self.maintf and update its state. When I press Ctrl N, the text field gets emptied out. In open method, we want to open a native file picker so the user can choose a file to work on it in our text editor. So we need to use ft.filePicker and set its unresolved attribute to another function so when we choose a file, that function gets executed. The event handler in this case is an instance of filePicker result event. Then the filePicker should be added to the page. I append it to the overlay. FilePicker doesn't change our layout so you can add it to the main page itself. It has a size of 0 on the page and opens another one for us. Finally, we want to use pickFiles method of the filePicker. We don't want the user to pick multiple files. Then we can set allowed extensions. It's a list. And finally, set the title to open file. All of these were to open the file picker. When we choose a file, file picker sends data of the file that we picked through the event handler, which is the E attribute of open file result. Then it gets executed. So let's print e.files out to see what data we get from the file picker. So e.files is a list that contains file picker file object. So we can now have the path and name of the file easily. First, let's get the path. We want the first index of the list and then the path. That's simple. Then we can get the name of the file the same way and store it in self.filename. So we can change the title of the tab to the name of the file and a title suffix that we will create soon. I want the title suffix to be the name of the app, which is pilot, Python and flat. And when we run the app, we have new file as the name of the file by default. Back to the open result method. Now that we have the file path, we can store it in a class field to access it later across the class. Then open the file in the read mode as file and we set the value of our text field as the file.read, which is the content of the file that we've selected. Finally, we update the self.maintf and the page so the title gets updated. Now when we pick a file, we get its value and change the title to its name so we know what file we are working on. But I want to notify the user that a new file was opened. For that, let's create another method named custom snack bar. Our function gets a text and an icon. These are not event handlers. We don't need an event handler because this one just activates a widget for us. Self.page.snackbar equals ft.snackbar with the color of amber 200. Open is true, which says open it up, and its content is a row, alignment is center, or if you did in axis alignment that's center, they are the same. And it has two controls, the text and icon that you specify when the method is called. Now when we open a file, app beautifully tells us what happened. Let's change the color of the text. For the save as click method, we copy the file picker of open file method and change the unresolved attribute 
of the file picker to save as result method. Also, the method of the file picker should be save file. Let's print e.path out. Oh, I forgot to remove allow multiple attribute because the save file method doesn't have such an attribute. So e.path gives us the pass. This is different to the open file method as here we use save file method of file picker, not pick files. Let's first change the title of the file picker to save as and also set the default name of the file to new file. Let's test it. Okay, now you can save the file to the hard disk. We open the file in the write mode as file. Open function is a built-in function to manipulate files. First argument is the path to the file and second is its mode which is a string. It has different modes but we need write and read mode here. So we open the file and write the value of our text field to it. Then we update the self.current file path for later use. Now we need to change the title to the name of the file that we saved. For that we split e.path and pass double backslash to split. That means separate the content of e.path by backslashes. We use double backslash as backslash itself is escape character, so we need to make it double. This gives us a list that its last item is the name of the file. So you can change the title to file name index minus one plus self that title suffix. Minus one gives us the last item of a list and name of the file is always the last item. Finally we call the custom snack bar to notify the user and update the page. Let's test it. I save the file and open it to see if the content is saved. Good. It's save method's turn. We first check if the self.current file path is empty. If it's empty, then we simply call self.save as click to go through the process of saving it on the hard disk. Otherwise, we open self.current file path as file in the read mode. and check if the value of the text field is the same as the value of the file. If they are different, self.text is different is true. So if the text is different, we again open the file but this time in write mode, as writable file, and write the value of the text field to the writable file and make self.isText different false, as they are the same now. Finally, we notify the user through the snack bar and update the page. If text wasn't different at the first place, we don't need to do anything and pass. Let's test it. Oh, this is self.maintf, not ft.maintf. Let's first create a file, then open it. Save as works perfectly. If I try to save the file, nothing happens, as the text isn't changed at all. But when I change it, the file will be saved. I don't like the icon, let's change it. Next, I want a pop-up menu button to change the font size and family. Let's go to the build method and create it as self.font menu. Its content is an icon and it contains just one item, which is a column. The first control is a text which says font. Let's add it to the overlay to see how it looks. Now let's create a slider as self.fontSize slider. A text field is better to change the font size, but I want to show you how sliders work in flat. So the min is 0, max is 200, and divisions are also 200. So you can go from 0 to 200 and it gets increased one by one. Its default value is 14 as the text field in flat has the default font size of 14. Its label is the value itself so the user sees the value that they choose. And its unchanged attribute is set to self that font size changed. Let's create the function. And set the text size of the text field to the value of our slider. 
and update the text field. Notice that we don't need to update the whole page here, which saves performance and energy. Let's add the slider to the font menu and test it. Now you can create a drop down to change the font. Its unchange is equal to self.fontChanged method. Its alignment is center. Its width is 150 pixels. Its label is equal to font family. And finally, its options is a list that we specify shortly. Let's create font changed method and add a drop down to the font menu. In the fonts folder where my script is running from, I have 5.ttf font files downloaded from Google Fonts. Inflet.ttf, .ttc, and .otf format is supported. So you specify the fonts of the page as a dictionary. The key is its custom name that we declare, and the value is the path to the font. I've written them already to save the time. And we tell the flat that our asset directory is fonts folder. I quickly created drop down options for the font family and their text is exactly what we had in the fonts dictionary. Now we should change the font family of self.maintf.text cell to the value of the drop down that we choose and update the text field. This won't work unless we specify the font family of the text field. I just set the font family to none. This lets the text field change its font. Perfect. Last thing, I want to show an alert dialog to the user before closing the palette editor if the file is not safe. So it can't be closed that easy and user doesn't lose its file accidentally. Let's create custom close event method and pass it for now. Then we need to set self that is text different when we save as the file and open the file to false. If remember, self that is text different is used to check if the text needs to be saved or not. Then in the constructor we set self that text is different to true, as when we have a fresh new file, it's not saved. Also, self that current file path is empty. Then we set self that page window prevent close to true, so the window can't be closed. And set self that page on window event to self that custom close event. This on window event gives us different window events like minimizing, resizing, and closing it. Let's test custom close event method. It returns all the events that one of them is close. So first we create self custom dialog, which is an other dialog. Open is true. Title is please confirm. And its content says that the file hasn't been saved. Actions is a list of widgets. We need three text buttons. First one is save. Second is close anyway. And last one is cancel. If e.data is equal to close, this checks if user has pressed the close button. If self.current file path is empty, or text is different, we show the custom dialog and update the page. Otherwise, the file is saved and we just call self.pageWindowDestroy to close that. I almost forgot that we, when we change the text field's value, we should change self that is text different. Let's pass self that text change to the unchanged attribute of our text field, and change the value of self that text is different to true. Finally, we create the methods of other dialog buttons. If user press the save button, we call self that save clicked and sleep for a small amount of time. Then we call the self that page window destroy. I wanted to use threading for this, as we need to wait to save the file first, then destroy the window, but threading is out of the scope of this video. Unfortunately, time.sleep did the job. So let's import time. If user presses close anyway button, we just close the app. And if cancel clicked, we close the dialog box and update the page so user can continue their work.
and it works perfectly. When text is changed, we make stuff that is text filled true, not false. It's done. Let's have a final look. Open, save, and save as work perfectly, and shortcut keys make it look professional. Also, the font size and family changing is cool. Congrats to us for creating this beautiful text editor in flat. Please give me a thumb up, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more cool stuff. Take care, see you later.